Hello everyone, before we get underway here today, I just uh, wanted to let you know I'm coming back. I know I've been off for a little while, and I'm sorry about that. Just had some personal stuff going on. Need to really make sure I understood what the long-term plans were for Bad Apples and my reviews. And, you know, just needed a little me time. Uh, with that being said, no, I'm back. I'm going to have an upload schedule coming up here in a few days, so you guys are going to get an idea what videos are coming to YouTube and when. Uh, I hope that uh, you guys still check out my blog as well, which I've already started to get stuff back on there. Uh, I really hope you guys appreciate, uh, continue to appreciate all the stuff we're doing. I'm really glad to be back, and I'm hoping you guys continue to enjoy the content. With that being said, uh, thank you for your continued support, and let's get underway. Gynax. The studio's rise to stardom and dominance in the mid-90s forever cemented in anime history. With that being said, there's been plenty of shows that have been made by the... Uh, studio over its almost 50 year run, however some are more infamous than others. And while I've done an article about this online, which you can check out now, uh, I took some more time to think about it, and I wanted to do a video about my top 5 favorite Gynax animes. Note that this is just my own personal taste, with over 40 shows that they've done, and so many of them being what genre shows or just shows in general that people really like. Just know this is my top five list, and I'll let me explain to you why these are the entries that I put there. Uh, with that being said, this is my top five Gynax anime. Number five, Panty and Stocking. Angels, demons, a BDSM priest, and damn near hentai levels of fan service? Well, sign me to hell up! No shocker just off the title alone, this series is a absolute jam-packed 13 episode Damn near hentai, if I have to say it. Definitely one of the horniest of the Gynax works. Uh, the series does was directed by Hiroyuki Yamashi in 2010. And something I really like about the series, though, is on top of it also being really well animated, its animation style much more resembles the Western, typical Western cartoon animation, which, for people who are not a big fan of the anime aesthetic, it definitely is more pleasing visual for those who might not be used to that. Additionally, the series is, does a really good job balancing its comedy and its more serious storyline. Because believe it or not, a show about angels that are trying to get back to heaven would actually have a serious story. I love, however, with this show, going back to its animation, how seamless the styles transition. Because this is one of those really cool animes that messes with every style of animation. Going from traditional Western animation to your traditional Japanese animation, a little bit of everything in between. Uh, all the fights are really fun. They have uh, typically some sort of theme behind them, in some way, shape, or form. And of course, the Anarchy Sisters find every which way to mess it up and make the situation way more complicated than it ever has. Now, I love this show, but. With just what I've talked about here, it goes without saying, this is legitimately one of the horniest non-hentai based animes. With that being said, you don't want to go into this, first off if you have a family, just, just don't watch this in front of your mom and dad, uh, you will get chastised and judged for quite a while. However, the old, sexual, how sexual the series is can actually turn you off from the overall story. Because there is a lot of both sexual humor and just overall sexual nature of the show and it definitely holds the series back overall in my opinion now i still think the show has enough lighthearted moments and comedic moments it actually tells a fairly heartfelt story by the end of the day it's very hard to look past that and that's why it sits here in the first entry of our top five number four re cutie honey in 2004 Guy next took a stab at one of Go Nagai's original masterpieces. That is Cutie Honey, a story that goes back over four decades. Guy next took, the pro took a three episode OVA to celebrate its 40th anniversary of its anime debut. While this entry is the sole OVA on our list, the OVA is so well made for all the fans who love the series. The series was directed by Hideki Anno, which won't be the last time his name appears on this list. The OVA is both a homage and a soft retelling of the original 1973 story. For those who don't know about Cutie Honey and want to know more, I actually did a video back on my old YouTube channel all about Cutie Honey and why you should check it out. In essence, Cutie Honey is what birthed the magical girl genre of anime. 
and it follows the story of Honey Kisaragi, a transforming android who could take pretty much any disguise in her revenge story against a criminal organization called Tiger Claw. This series is kind of an, a big one in the history of Japan. The original 1973 is really one of the first series to have a female lead. However, Gainax, taking almost 40 years worth of material in four different series and compiling them into a three one-hour episodes really is one of the big reasons I put this on this list. As this project, while maybe they're more one of the more obscure ones, for the people who have watched Cutie Honey, this is a perfect love letter to almost 40 years of material. And it takes everything that was good and bad with the series and maximizes it to the hundredth percent. From the over-sexualization that was in some of the earlier stuff of Cutie Honey, to the really comedic and fun fights, and a really influential color palette that they would use during their fights. Um, believe it or not, the super colorful battles that happened in the original Cutie Honey were a big influencing uh, force behind the, how JoJo's got its super colorful uh, palette scheme. All in all, this is an entry that wall stays on my list stays here largely because cutie honey unfortunately is a forgotten anime and i really hope people go back and go check out the video and check out the series as a whole uh something i really like though before i wrap things up is one of the big differences between cutie honey and panty and stocking while both very sexual entries to start our list which don't get don't worry it gets better from here a lot of the time cutie honey uses nudity in a more tame manner however i know a lot of people once again really do feel uncomfortable with nudity and any sexual actions in anime. So this is another entry that may not be for those people. I do want to prefer that. However, I think it's a really fun series. It's one though you need to have context of the franchise before getting into. This is definitely not where you want to start this franchise. So I highly recommend people watch this after they've seen at least the original 1973 anime. But with that being said, it's going to sit firmly here at fourth on our list. Number three, Goran Lagann. What most fans consider the last great Gainax production, this 2000 mecha anime took everything the genre is and has been known for for almost 40 years and flipped it on its head. Its hyper-stylization of the mecha genre is brought in large part from, from the, the director of the series, Hiroyuki Ishimashi, who we actually just talked about earlier in this episode. One thing I love about this series in particular is its use of colors, and that's something that Gainax has really been known for for a while now. However, it's brought to the the, 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 the dials turned up to ten in this series. Sometimes it feels like a vomit of some, you're vomiting a rainbow onto the screen. However, I like it because it's one of those things where these color, the coloring and shading and the overall art style, which is really what Gainax is known for. It's so top-notch. You get this super dynamic shading throughout Gorn Lagan that you really don't see in any other works they've done. And it really makes the series pop in a way that mecha anime really doesn't pop. Uh, but on top of that, its story is really heartfelt and very melancholy, all things considered. While it's far from the most depressing series they've ever done, it's definitely not one that uh, is a roller coaster of fun like the, a lot of trailers and initial screenshots may, make you think. I like this story too because it really is a story about never giving up and ultimately doing anything you can to achieve your goals, while also being a story that can make you laugh, cry, and experience every good emotion that you want from an anime. I have this at number three. Some people could easily put this as their number one. And the biggest reason I put it at number three is while it does some really original and cool ideas, it still largely is reliant on the major tropes of the mecha genre. However, I feel like it approaches these tropes at a very high level. So for any of you who are big fans of Gundam, Gundam genre, Transformers, all that, this is a great modern take on that genre, and I highly recommend it. Number two, Fooly Cooly. To maybe actually no one's shock, the series that almost takes up half the content of this channel comes in as the runner-up. Now, I'm not going to go too in-depth as I took a whole month dedicated to this series, but if you haven't seen it, j j just go watch it. I mean, I can't really talk about Fully Cooly as like a show 
I can't even really describe it too much. It's it's a sensory experience is the best way to describe it. Uh, it came out in 2001, and it's six episodes, and it does a great job conveying real world themes. Like it really does a good job explaining like how it is growing up as a kid, and how you experience things maybe different than your parents, and ultimately you you need to enjoy the years that you're a kid instead of trying to grow up too quick, which is really the overarching theme of Fully Cooley. But Fully Cooley is so much more than that, and if you haven't checked out our videos, please do. I think it's gonna, we do a much better job explaining it in there than I could ever do in the short amount of time I have here with you. Now, what I can tell you about is it's a gorgeous anime that is basically stylist. It, 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 it's using every known weight, shape, and form of style of animation that it can, uh, to the point where some people find it a little bit jarring. That being said, though, this, yeah, this is just a must-watch series. If you're a fan of animation, this is a series you could probably write a whole paper on. It is so multi-layered, so complex, so deep, and it's just, it makes you feel like a kid again. Like, I watched it again recently, after I finished, uh, our review of Fooly Cooly here on the channel, and it really brought me back. It brought me back to, like, that um, childlike wonder and amusement that you have when you're, like, ten years old. And it's really cool. Uh, however, it does come in the runner-up on this list simply because I think number one is maybe one of the five most important animes ever made. Number one. Neon Genesis Evangelion. To maybe no one's surprise, the number one is Hayat Dekianos and Studio Gainax's magnum opus. This anime is one of the closest animes that I view being perfect, with it also being one of the most influential properties to ever come out of Japan regardless of genre. Neon Genesis Evangelion is the king of the studio. It's also one of the most analyzed properties of media ever, from entire film classes being dedicated to this one series. Evangelion single-handedly ended up rewriting the entire mecha genre as we know it, and its influence is still being felt over 20 years since it's ended. Its animation is that peak, beautiful 90s aesthetic that a lot of people seem to like, and its story is very guttural and real, and while it sits, takes place in such a fantastical world, it's so grounded, and it's one of those just... You can't... There's not words to describe it. Like, I... I'm going to be very straight up with you. There's some series you just have to watch, and this is one of them. I do want to mention uh, the otherworldly soundtrack put together by Shiro Saigisu, uh, who wrote a soundtrack that ended up winning the best uh, soundtrack award at the Oscars. It's one of the only times an animated mo an a Japanese animated film ever won an award at the Oscars. Uh, the story follows a young boy named Shinji charged in task of fighting in a giant robot to save the world. And realistically, Shinji absolutely is not built for it. Uh, this is a story I must warn you that is definitely not for the faint of heart. It is very real, guttural. If you're not in the right headspace, it's really not a series to watch. However, for those who want to experience a life-changing type of anime, this is for you. I highly recommend anyone who's a true fan of anime needs to watch this series. I'm going to bring in one honorable mention, and that is the one, the only, Daikon 4. Now, I wasn't sure if I wanted to include it on the list or not, however, I felt like I needed to mention it. While it didn't actually get made under the Gainax label, the same exact team under the alias of Daikon's films ended up making this for the 1983 Daikon Science Fiction Convention. And I've, of course, done a whole video on this channel, which is, to this day, our most watched video, about why you should watch and why the Daikon 4 video is so important. That being said, though, I felt that it needed to be mentioned on this list, as it is arguably the most influential property that the Guy Next team has ever made. However, I didn't want to put it on this list simply because it was not made under the label of Guy Next, and I felt that I would want to give these five series a head that I have on this list, this proper spotlight. But for those who enjoy the genre of animation and really want to look at one of the more important pieces of animation in the history of the industry, it's a must watch for any and all. Basically, going forward, we're gonna start getting back in the group of things here on Bad Apples uh, after 
quite a bit of a hiatus and expect a new video up every Sunday and this is just something to get me into a groove again, some consistency uh, expect a lot more like long format stuff as well uh, also expect some potential reactions plus whatever else you guys really want to see but that's kind of the, the general gist of the situation I hope you guys are um, still decide to support us I know we've been really sporadic with our posting and everything but we're gonna start finally really getting back in the groove of things and uh, we really hope you guys continue to support and enjoy our work and we got a lot of exciting stuff for you in the future and with that being said uh, we thank you so much and I'll see you Sunday.